Welcome into Sunday Sermon. Uh, this is a uh, once a week on Sundays. Uh, sometime it'll come to you. And uh, what we do, we, we have a book of scripture. Our scripture is from uh, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Now he has several uh, uh, books. Well, he has one book, uh, but several, how we say, editions. Uh, there's the original 1984 edition, which we, well, we have that. We usually, we use that when we're in Denbaza because that's where it lives. Uh, and then uh, there's this, uh, the, well, there's the Counter-Racist Code uh, Word Guide, uh, which actually mine is now in, I think it's in, I think mine is in St. Louis. I'll, I'll pick it up. I'm about on my way to St. Louis in a, in a week and a half or something like that. Uh, but then you have the uh, uh, 2016 edition, the, uh, the, what we call the revised and expanded edition of uh, the United Independent Compensatory uh, Code System concept. It's a, well, it's a compensatory uh, counter-racist code uh, book guide. And uh, like I said, this is expanded, uh, expanded revised edition. It's a workbook textbook for thought, speech, and or actions for victims of racism, of racism which Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. defines as uh, white supremacy. Now, if you're not a victim, then this is not the textbook work for, for you. Okay, so uh, I, I, like I say, every week, every Sunday, we we use because this is our book. This is our book, meaning well, my our, our well, this uh, yeah, our I have a, I have, a, I have an extensive like uh, groups of people, uh, a scripture. Everybody has their scripture. You have all kinds of uh, scripture <laughs> all over the world. Uh, so this 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 is my scripture book. Now I do uh, I. I well, I have other scripture books, but on Sundays we concentrate on this book. Now, what I've I've made an adjustment because <clears throat> usually I, I I look at something, I think about it, I, I listen to the broadcast or the I should say the transmission that comes over the internet, or every Tuesday, and uh, and sometimes I get something from there and I, and I look up in the book and something something like that. But what I've begun to do is that the I didn't notice it. Well, they didn't notice it at the end of this uh, of this edition, right? He has, um, he has a thing that they call they call the uh, general compensatory quotations for thought, speech, and action. These are quotations from Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. and I find them fascinating. It's also maybe we can discuss now. I I, I pick a because it goes from page uh, what page uh, four hundred three all the way to page uh, uh, four forty seven. Well, obviously, I'm not going to read each each and every quote. So I pick out a few. Well, this time I picked out twelve, and I did it from the beginning. Because I, I I'm all over this place. But what I do is I I, I uh, every the last Sunday of every month. That's when I deal with with this section. I find it fascinating. And sometimes I talk a little bit more in this section here too. Um, so here we go on page. Uh, we we'll go. We we'll go. We have. I, I think I picked out twelve. Twelve quotes. Uh, well, we we'll, we. We'll, 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 we'll do uh, um, what do you say page by page hold on a second I got a little something <coughs> in my throat so I take some coconut water so, so if I hit the coconut water every few well then you know what it is right oh oh the, the set has changed but back there you see the uh, the cover page for my resume it says uh, uh, cultural revolutionary of course in, 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 in culture Revolution just means it goes around and around and around like a hamster wheel. So, but in culture, I don't believe that. I don't believe there's anything new under the sun. So, as a as a cultural person, I'm an audio dramatist. I, I'm an audio dramatist. That's what I do. Uh, so, uh, so when I do an audio drama, I don't really believe that uh, anything is new, right? But in life, I'm a, I'm a, what's called a, an evolutionary. Similar to Mr. Newly Foolish Jr. says he learned something new. Well, he's always learning. So I'm um, an evolutionary. Evolutionary, well, you, you, you evolve, right? So I've been evolving for a while. Uh, back there, like you see, you see that's the, uh, it's a, it's a, it's an art piece, actually. It's uh, David Hammond's uh, piece that he did for a biannual thing someplace, Paris, wherever it was. And uh, it's uh, red, black, and green. You see the stars on there like that. And I just put up, uh, on the back of this, well, I just put up, uh, I have a t-shirt that has a, uh, uh, John Henry Clark on it, and uh, he has this quote that he, well, the quote, what does the quote say? Let me read the quote for you. It says, uh, uh, only debate, right? But, well, basically, I, uh, John Henry Clark, only debate my equals, all else I teach, right? 
actually, I find it a little sus, but for me, teaching is something different, right? So I, I would say he only debates. I know what he's saying, but all others, he lectures. It's a, it's a lecture. He's a lecturer, you know, like that. Well, peace and blessings on his eternal immortal soul, John Henry Clark. We should always raise him up. Uh, I'm known. Well, John Henry Clark used to be, uh, he, well, he taught lecture all over, all over Harlem. And when I was at the Cadet Corps, you know, in, 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 the, in the 60s, right? He he was there. <laughs> he come every once in a while there. Uh, the, my most extensive time with him was with uh, First World Alliance, uh, which the 104 Christian Convent Avenue that church there every week. You know that was one of his. Well, that every week was there. The fact, Mister Neely Fuller Jr. Uh, was at First World Alliance early on. I wasn't there at that point. First World Alliance was up in the nave of the church, but later it went to the. Well, but began in the basement of the church. At that time, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. actually was there. Anyway, well, that's a little history you might, may not want to know. Okay, so uh, on page uh, 403, we, we, we highlighted uh, three quotations, three, uh, what, do, what do we call these things again? Uh, a general compensatory quotation for thought, speech, and or action. Okay? So there you go. The first one that I've highlighted is it has been said that the race problem cannot be solved. It can only be discussed. If this is true, there's no reason to discuss it. <laughs> think, think about that. If it is true that the race problem cannot be solved, it can only be discussed, then there's no reason to, to, to discuss it. You always be on the racism. Well, you, just, you can't solve it. You just blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's what it means to me. What does it mean to you? Uh, the second quote I have on this page, race is racism. A person who functions as a member of a race is a racist white supremacist. Okay, race white supremacist. Well, let's let, I think the next, the next quote might, um, might illuminate that it says uh, no major problem can exist among and between people of the known universe uh, of the known universe can be eliminated until racism is eliminated oh that's cool so the quote race is racism a person who functions as a member of a race is a racist white supremacist so if you but uh, but Wow. So if you identify, well, I've heard this, you know, when he does his his, his, his uh, transmissions on Tuesdays from the, uh, well, you can get that transmission from ProduceJustice.com. It's, uh, they archive it too. And it comes, I think, from 9 to 11 on uh, on that Tuesday, on every Tuesday morning. It's, it's, he's 93 years old. So it's great that we still have him. We still have him. We can ask him. And you can call and ask questions. So you can just go to ProduceJustice.com. That's the, uh, the website. Also, you can get the books from there too. Okay. Okay, I mean, let me just spin in my brain. Race is racism. Okay, that's a absolute, whatever. A person who functions as a member of a race is a racist white supremacist. Uh, well, what happens if... Okay, I'll let you all think about that. Let me go to the last one again. No major problem can exist among and between people of the known universe can be eliminated until racism is eliminated. So he says, no major problem. Okay, we got problems. It all stems back to racism. Like I said, this is a Sunday sermon, so I'm supposed to be here, whatever. You know how preachers get up there and they try to interpret. But, uh, well, I just got the second one. I, I can't interpret. I, I'm going like, I'm spinning it in my head too. So you you figure that out too. But that but the other one is uh, that last one. Uh, uh, no major problem can exist between people of the known universe can be eliminated until racism is limited. So you eliminate racism, then we can talk about everything else. Then you probably won't have any problems. Well, you won't have any major problems. <clears throat> then on page uh, 404, I have a rather lengthy, a rather lengthy, well, let me go see it. Lengthy one it says, many white supremacists, both male and female, most of the time are very, very nice, pleasant, and gentle, both to white people and to non-white people. That does not mean, however, that a white supremacist practices justice so he has in, in, uh, in brackets, just as I guess is defining a uh, balance between people. White supremacy itself is the greatest 
and most effective form of non-justice in the known universe. Oh, let me know. We, we don't have to repeat that. No, let's repeat that. Uh, let me put this. Justice, the balance between people. Okay, let's leave it. Let's hold that for, for uh, a moment. White supremacy itself is the greatest and most effective form of non-justice. That would be non-balance between people. In the known universe. I like that one. A person can be nice, pleasant, gentle, and at the same time mistreat people in many different ways. Particularly through destructive deception when practiced on a massive scale. Now this this comes to mind of a uh, of uh when they say about uh, diplomats and presidents, like like for instance, I'm just gonna bring up Ronald Reagan. They said, oh, but he was a very, he's like a grandfather. He's a very nice person. But look at all the damage he did, you know. Mm. In fact, let me stay with John Ronald Reagan for a second. I was a, a production engineer for WBI Radio at the time. But, and I was, which means I, 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 I engineered the news. So I had to get a lot of news feeds down and, you know, things, things in that, that nature. It was curious to me because he went and visited, when he went to Germany, he went and visited the, the Bitburg uh, graves, you know, of, of Nazis and stuff like that. Now you look and say, well, why is he doing that? And, well, what's that what they do? But that's a signal. Nice guy. That's what he's, he's saying nice things. He sounds nice, grandfatherly voice. But, but his actions to go into big and getting a photo opportunity so, so he can egg on, so he can, uh, uh, you can have this forever for, 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 for for white supremacists to see, hey, a president of the United States supports us. Just like back then, Calvin Coolidge, when he uh, aired Birth of a Nation. These folks, they can say what they want, but you have to look at the actions, you see? Okay. Uh, next one on this page, this is uh, number uh, four or five. This is five. The fifth, the fifth, fifth of the, out of 12. We're going 12. Just stick, stick with us. One of the most destructive things that racist man and racist woman, white supremacists collectively, require non, uh, non-white people to do is to lie to themselves and to speak and act as if the lies are true. Let that wash over you. Another quote, uh, saying from, well, quote from Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. The system of white supremacy Remember, it's a system of white supremacy. Is the greatest conspiracy ever produced by the people of the no by the yeah, the people of the known universe. And the white people who have chosen to participate in the system of white supremacy are the greatest conspirators. Let that wash over you. Now on page uh, 405, we got three from here. And let me just show you this. There's a lot of quotes on the on the pages. I just I just you know like I said I'm I'm doing this at the last Sunday of every month. So I just skip around and every I don't know sometimes I do nine. So well I see whatever. I I, I operate in deriv- derivatives of three. That's how I would operate with this one. Huh? As long as white supremacy racism exists, every non-white person in the known universe possesses the victim's guaranteed qualification. Let me let me whisk my thing out. I wanna I have oh yeah, I wanna highlight this. Because this 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 is what he called VGQ, right? Let me highlight this. Oh use a highlighter too when you oh well use a highlighter in your books. Let me see. Uh here it is. Victims guaranteed VGQ qualification. And he, he goes into that a lot, you know. VGQ, of saying whatever he or she thinks should be said about racism, or race, racism, and or counter-racism. So anybody that's a victim, they can say whatever they want. And by extension, what he says on his, on his program when he transmits, is that basically, hey, they said what they said. Can you comment on that? No, they said what they said. What they said. That's, they have every right to say whatever they want. Because they're a victim, Right? Uh, the second one on this page that I highlighted. Oh, actually, these two go together. Well, let's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put them together. These two go together. During the existence of white supremacy, racism, 
when you hear a non-white person laughing, the one thing that you can be certain of is that absolutely nothing is funny. And the next uh, thing right under it says, as long as white supremacy exists, the non-white person who thinks that anything is funny is either ignorant of the truth or, <laughs> or ignorant of the truth about what is happening or he or she is actively insane. I sort of like those two going together like that. Shall we repeat it again? Shall the congregation listen to this again? I, I, let's listen to it again. During the existence of white supremacy, racism, when you hear a non-white person laughing, the one thing that you can be certain of is that absolutely nothing is funny. As long as white supremacy exists, the non-white person who thinks that anything is funny is either ignorant of the truth about what is happening or he or she is actively insane. Just thought you should know that. Okay, let's see. Let's go to the next page that we have here. Okay, come on, turn the page. Oh, I don't highlight anything on this, these two pages. But the next page that we highlighted was uh, something on this. This section was uh, page 408. Remember, this is of the uh, the, the uh, 2016 Mr. Lily Fuller Jr.'s uh, compensatory, the, the, the revised edition of, of his uh, great tome. And this is that. You can see these at the end. These are quotes from him, of course. This, this quote. Whoever dominates you also dominates everything that you claim is yours. Whoever dominates you also dominates whatever you claim you control. We don't need to talk about that. You think you own that car. But if somebody's dominating you, you don't actually own that car. If the system may allow you to have that car, but you don't own it. The tax examples is the house. This is my house. I own this house. But in the system of racism and white supremacy, right? Uh, actually, you know, if you have a mortgage or whatever have you, then it's the, uh, you know, it's the bank that owns it. We say, oh, but I paid up. I have all that. I pay, I pay my taxes, everything like that. Oh, true enough. But there's a thing called eminent domain. If they want to run a railroad track through that thing, they'll just snatch your <laughs> property away to run. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Or maybe they'll pay you off or whatever. So that's what they used to do. I think they still can do it now. Eminent domain. Whatever country you're in, I guess. Uh, another one. Unfortunately, too many black people are silly about those things that are serious and serious about those things that are silly. What can we say? Here's a good one. I like this one. Well, just because I like to study, read. Study everything. Brag about nothing. Celebrate nothing. If you insist on bragging, brag about all the times that you learn how ignorant you are. Brag about nothing. Celebrate about nothing. Again, if it's until I guess I would say this applies whether we have the system of of of, of white supremacy, you know, racism or not, right? But I particularly like that one. Let me star this one. I, I want to put a star on this one. Why? Because I like I like this one. Because, you know, people brag all the time. I got this. I got that. I mean, this is my thing about... And think about this. One of the things that started this stuff... Hey, let me put a star right here. Everybody talks about, oh, you know, the, the great, say, for instance, African leader, Mansa Musa, the richest man in history, right? And what did he do? He put on all his gold and started marching from Mali all the way up through Europe and on the way to and I go bankrupt the nations or whatever have you. But that was bragging. That was bragging. And when them Europeans saw that, said, what, what, what is it? Ooh, we got gold. Well, how did... well, that started to me. Hey, you got to ask the you got to ask the Pan African, the Hotep or whatever brothers, if if this is correct. Now, just like again, well, what happens today? You know, your your rappers, your big, whatever people, they they. All this gold, yeah, I, I got gold chains rather than I, I've unchained. I don't have no the, the iron shackles and I have gold chains. You're bragging. Then all of a sudden, somebody snatched that sucker from you. Don't brag. And you can't celebrate if you still have a system of racism, white supremacy. There's no celebration. You ain't got no time to celebrate. 
well, let's party. I have this thing. Okay, well, that's, that's your thing. You know, well, whatever. You know, but if you're serious about getting rid of the thing, I mean, you you know what? It's, it's like a, I see this. I, I, I live in South Africa. And when they had the World Cup in 2000, 2010, right, it was interesting. Because the South Africans, the team, right, they got a, they got us gold, you know, whatever have you. And they started celebrating over there. And I looked, I said, oh, I don't think you should start celebrating. Yeah, the game is not over. This happens all the time. Football, they have their little celebrations, little dances. That's great. So I'm not taking that away from anybody, right? Until the game is over, too. If I, hey, if I were a coach, it would be rough. Because I say, we ain't celebrate nothing. Yeah, I know you want to spike the football. Okay, spike the football. You want to do a little dance of the thing? Nah. You want to dance? Until we win, till we get to the playoffs, till we actually win the Super Bowl, nothing. You want to celebrate? I'm taking your celebration rights away from you until you succeed, ultimately succeed. See? But that's me. You know, I, nobody's going to agree with that one. Uh, okay. That's one. Oh, yeah, two, oh, yeah, three on that thing. Let's see. How many more do we... Nothing on this page. Nothing on this page. Oh, that was it. Was that 12? Oh, that's a good way to stop, too. One, two, three... Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There it is, 10, 11, 12. So we gave you 12 in this Sunday sermon. We gave you 12 uh, general compensatory quotations of, uh, for thought, speech, and or action. So let's think about that. That's a, well, a Sunday sermon for me. T from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. From our scripture, from Mr. Neely Fuller Jr.